Universiteit van Narbe aan starting our educational series on obesity and we're going to start off with the most current weight loss that we have available. I'm going to do this over three episodes as it is quite a big chapter and I want for us to have a fair and meaningful approach to what can be expected. So the drug I would like to discuss today is not a drug that is unfamiliar to the audience by any means. You've probably by now all heard about semi-glutide or one or the other derivative of semi-glutide. And they are basically divided into a big class of incretin hormones. That means that there are hormones that work within the gastrointestinal tract but will have an extensive uh, and quite broad effect on the, the pancreas, the, the, the brain, the liver, the adipose tissue and even gastrointestinal, uh, the gastrointestinal tract in itself. When you start off on a health journey or a weight loss journey you have to decide where you want to put your focus. Is it that you want to diminish your health risk for a cardiovascular incident, a cerebrovascular incident, cancer, diabetes, hypertension, or is it that you have those under control with medication, but you still want to obtain the weight loss? And this is very important because if you don't make it very clear to your treating physician what your aim and what your goal is, these drugs very quickly become very misplaced and the expectations can be so big that we will not be able to justify the means to the end. Now, Let's start off first uh, with looking at why did so many of the weight loss drugs we worked on in the past, why did they fail? There is simply one reason and that is that the hypothalamus where the appetite center is situated is quite protected in the sense of the body. We have a 20 to 1 blood-brain barrier block. In other words, for us to develop that is going to be able to penetrate the hypothalamus where the satiety center is located and your, your uh, intake will be determined by is very difficult because by the time that we reach the levels of concentration that we are after to give us the needed effect of that medication, we are also very burdened with all the side effects of that. And that is why so many drugs have come and gone on multiple occasions throughout the last 30 years, none of them showing any form of longevity. The first that showed any promise in the more recent past was semi-glutide and after that we had Trulicity and that was followed by Manjaro. Now we have to decide whether you are interested in a weight loss component only or whether you are interested in improving your risk profile or whether you would like to combine both. We have to be very realistic about the health economic impact uh, of these drugs. Uh, whilst I will discuss the mechanism of action in the next episode, you've got to be prepared to spend somewhere between two and a half thousand, to perhaps even up to four or maybe even eight thousand rand a month to get the needed effect in weight loss. We are looking at a span depending on what we choose and what dosage we decide on and how long you are prepared to take it of 
between 5% and 22%. And if you are going to be on a compound product and we are not entirely clear about what molecules we've got in there, you may end up achieving at best a 5% weight loss. That is if you are a responder. That brings me to the next topic. You have to decide whether you are a responder or a non-responder. Generally, within the first four to six weeks after using, you can decide whether you've lost weight or you haven't lost weight. If you are a responder, which will be generally 30 to 50% of the patients, depending on your disease profile, you have to make a commitment to stay on these drugs for life. They have just published the 68 month outcome data uh, in America on Monjaro. And yes, the weight loss is there. Around 10 to 18% with good consequences. But if you look at the lifetime cost of these drugs, you've got to prepare yourself for anything over a period of seven years of a half a million upwards to a million rand in expenditure to sustain this. And we have to offset these books against what we can achieve with, for instance, bariatric surgery. So before you even embark on a whimsy, another quick fix, you have to sit down and calmly work out what it is that you want to achieve. If it is purely just to modify your risk factors, then it is worth seeing if you respond and you use them like a medication, like you would have for hypertension or diabetes, and they would become an add-on medication. If you decide you want to go the weight loss route, you have to be very, very honest in what you are going to achieve. So if you are satisfied with a 5% weight loss that you have achieved over a couple of months, three to six months, and that is all that you want to sustain for life, then obviously your health economic impact is going to be very little. If you are a responder and you want to continue at a much higher dose, first of all, there will be more side effects, there will be more consequences, but yes, we can look at a weight loss going up to perhaps even as high as 18%. And that is very, very meaningful. But you have to be prepared to take for life. You've got to accept that even though they have released the oral medication, we still have got no long outcome data on them. So you have to be prepared to inject yourself uh, on a weekly basis and you have to prepare for a very long term health economic cost and then work out what your return on investment is. It is not a wise idea for these to be used by slimming salons beauty salons, gym um, instructors, etc. They do not come without consequences. And unless you have a very long standing experience in how to gauge for these complications, you may very well find yourself in a position where you have anything from as mild as hair loss to optic neuritis, to pancreatic cancer, to thyroid cancer and liver disease. So we have to make sure that when we are dealing with weight loss drugs, we give them the, the seriousness and the consideration of a disease process and not use them as a quick fix. Uh, it is very important for you to have a very thorough checkup, a baseline checkup with preferably an endocrinologist or a physician or somebody well versed in the field of obesity 
that has worked with patients that are obese for a very long time to decide whether these are for you, point number one, whether they will pay your dividend, point number two, what drug will be the best for you, point number three, and point number four, that you are very aware of the cost and complications. But let's look at the positive side of all of this. We are way, way further than we were 20 years or even 10 years ago. We understand the incretins well. A lot of, a multitude in fact, of research has been done around these uh, incretins, uh, whether they be semi-glutide or whether they be Monjaro. Uh, and there are some new ones in the pipeline as well. And yes, they have opened up a door for what I call position of the incretins in the bigger picture. You may want to use them in preparation for bariatric surgery. You may want to use them if you had bariatric surgery, but you are for some reason regaining weight again. You may want to use them because you are facing an operation such as transplant or even a coronary artery bypass. You may want to use them to prevent the onset of diabetes. The most valuable position of the incretin drugs is with the state of pre-obesity. Uh, the new Lancer definition allows for pre-obesity and obesity, just like we allow for pre-diabetes and diabetes, just like we allow for uh, hypertension from a familial point of view and hypertension secondary to something else. It is just one of another form of treatment. It's the same as HIV versus AIDS. Um, and we can very effectively use these drugs in the pre-obesity phase to prevent the onset of obesity and the complications thereof. And we will talk more about what does pre-obesity mean and what does obesity mean. And what the incretins can really do for you at the level of pre-obesity and obesity. But for now, the consideration until we go on to the next episode is we've got to go and do a lot of soul searching as to what it is that you want to achieve. Do you want to achieve 5% of weight loss? Do you want to achieve 20% of weight loss? Do you want to achieve 45% of weight loss? or do you simply want to improve your health? That is a crucial question that every single patient must ask themselves before you can commit to any form of treatment. Stay with us. This is going to be interesting. We're going to address a multitude of obesity uh, medicine aspects and also some fallacies and fakes. Uh, we may laugh about some of them, but by and large, we hope to get the participation from you as our audience. Have a good day.